right now live at 5. The fight for American jobs. We break down Ivanka Trump's visit to Duluth. And Senate Republicans are rolling out plans for another coronavirus relief bill. Could it include another stimulus check? Plus, as people change the way they visit fast food restaurants, some businesses are looking at technology that doesn't require a human touch. And the pandemic has magnified the nation's digital divide, especially for those already struggling to make ends meet. How a Duluth apartment complex is tackling the issue. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Welcome to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look over Canal Park in Duluth, where earlier Ivanka Trump visited a local company. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. The fight for American jobs. That was the tone for Ivanka Trump's visit to Duluth today. Ivanka, the advisor to President Donald Trump, stopped by Duluth PAC to watch its owners sign the Pledge to America's Workers Initiative. CBS 3's Leanne Valdez has more. to see firsthand an unbelievable example of American excellence in, in manufacturing. So. Ivanka Trump, advisor to President Donald Trump, applauded Duluth Pack Monday on what she called its example of American manufacturing and hard work. Ivanka Trump, along with U.S. Secretary of the Interior David Bernhardt and Congressman Pete Stauber, visited the century-old manufacturer to watch the owners sign the Pledge to America's Workers Initiative. President Donald Trump started the initiative two years ago. To provide every American with an on-ramp to opportunity and to ensure that employers are making the commitment to their most valuable asset, which is the American worker. Now, the Trump administration hopes other trade groups across the country also take the pledge. We have been working closely with the private sector to make options known and to fund those options to enable people to explore the many ways um, that exist to acquire skills for high demand jobs. Ivanka Trump says investment in the Pledge to America's Workers initiative is more important now than ever. As so many people have been disconnected from the workforce, are experiencing tremendous vulnerability and fear. Tom Sega, owner of the Duluth PAC, says he's proof of that. Sega says when the COVID-19 pandemic started, they had to lay off many employees. It was a horrible day, Most, the worst day that I've had in my career. Sega pivoted and thought of a way to become an essential business by targeting a necessity. We started making medical gowns. Sega says Duluth Pack has more employees now than ever before. We're going to continue to do what we've done for 138 consecutive years in business, and that is hire, support, educate, and train, most importantly, American workers. Ivanka Trump says so far more than 440 companies have signed that pledge. Meanwhile, Ivanka's visit drew criticism since it was announced over the weekend. This morning, about 50 protesters gathered outside Duluth Pack criticizing the company for hosting her. The crowd seemed to have a variety of reasons for protesting, including the Trump administration's stance on mining projects, the missing and murdered indigenous women's crisis, and more. One protester told us she may not she may not shop at Duluth Pack again. Well, I've been a loyal Duluth Pack customer for a long time. I have a couple of Duluth Pack bags. I wear my Duluth Pack hoodie like most days, honestly. And it really sucked to see that a company that I love so much was inviting a fascist administration to a place that I love so much. Save the Boundary Waters also shared a statement on today's event hosted by a company that markets its products around the outdoors. Executive Director Tom Landweers, Minnesota's former DNR commissioner, wrote that the Trump administration is known for fast-tracking mining projects that he says pose a threat to the Boundary Waters. He added, quote, this administration shall be remembered for its efforts to destroy forever the cherished Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness, Minnesota's greatest natural wonder. We'll have more on this story coming up tonight at 6. Time is running out for Congress to pass the next coronavirus relief package as boosted unemployment benefits for roughly 25 million Americans are set to expire this week. Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. 
National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien is the latest Trump administration official to test positive for the coronavirus. The White House says there is no risk to President Trump, but the two have been in the same room recently. President Trump is headed to a pharmaceutical manufacturing facility today. Working at warp speed to make sure we have the manufacturing capability to produce a billion doses of vaccine uh, in 2021. The president's trip comes as Republican leaders are preparing to unveil their $1 trillion coronavirus relief package, despite opposition from some within their own party over the price tag. Half the Republicans are going to vote no to any phase four package. That's just a fact. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin and White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows spent the weekend on Capitol Hill negotiating with Senate Republicans, and they're optimistic the bill will eventually pass. The administration and the Senate Republicans are completely on the same page. Mark Meadows and I were up yesterday just working on technical issues in the drafts. As it stands now, the GOP proposal would ensure unemployed workers get no more than 70 percent of the wages they made before losing their jobs. Republicans are opposed to the current $600 per week payments, which expire this week. We have come to three cliffs this week. Unemployment insurance, protection for renters, protection for state and local government workers. Negotiations haven't even begun with Democrats, but there are areas where the two sides agree. Democrats and Republicans do agree on another round of $1,200 checks for most Americans and extending eviction protections until the end of the year. Negotiations could take several weeks as there is opposition over how much money to spend on coronavirus testing for schools and for state and local governments. Just a few days ago, we were celebrating the return of Major League Baseball for the season. But just as quickly as it came, it looks like just as quick it may be gone. Kelly Hinseth joins us now with more. Kelly, not really the news we want to hear. Not at all, Kristen. This, on this Monday, we should be leading with the fact that the Twins have scored the most runs in the entire league. Instead, a far cry, cry from that. Major League Baseball has postponed two games scheduled for tonight because of a coronavirus outbreak. The Miami Marlins home opener against the Baltimore Orioles and the New York Yankees game at the Philadelphia Phillies have both been postponed. A number of Marlins players and coaches, reportedly 14 in total, have tested positive for COVID-19. The MLB now wants to conduct more testing, and for now the Marlins are staying in Philadelphia where they played three games over the weekend. The postponements come just days after the league kicked off its abbreviated 2020 season. Now we don't know what the future of baseball is going to look at like right now. As of right now, the Twins are still set to open it up against the cards tomorrow night at Target Field, but this is a good reminder that just because sports are back doesn't mean the world is back to normal. Kristen yeah, Nelson. normal. I'm not sure that that's something uh, a word we'll be using in the near future at yeah. least. Thanks, Kelly. All right, and Dave is going to join us for our first look at the weather. Dave, pretty sunny out there, but big, fluffy white clouds all mm -hmm. over the place. And normal is a word we can use in weather because okay. conditions this week will be back to normal for temperatures. Those big clouds, yeah, let's take a look at some of them over the Ely area. They're associated with a trough of lower pressure that will bring a 30% chance of rain tonight to many towns in Minnesota, maybe a 20% chance for folks in Wisconsin and the UP. And that might be the last chance for rain or the week ahead because a big cell of high pressure takes over for tomorrow and it becomes partly cloudy to mostly sunny and just might stay that way. Next rain chance may not come until Saturday. Tuesday day planner says out the door you get a partly cloudy sky. Coming back home you get a partly cloudy sky and in between it's that way as well. 57 for the morning start. 77 will be the finish and that's pretty close to normal and humidity levels going down as well. The month long warm spell may be gone for a little while. Could it come back? I'll let you know in a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. Still to come, learn where you can get tested for COVID-19 for free, plus how some road work could add time to your commute. City by City is up next. And despite state orders to limit crowds, thousands attended the North Star Stampede. Coming up at 6, learn how this was possible. You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Vaki, Anthony Matt. And weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on live local CBS3.
home furniture stores. Got a big stop at the bargain shop. Jim Pearl Construction has been awarded the title of Authorized Replacement Contractor by the Marvin Window and Door Company. This entitles us to give better pricing and longer warranties on Marvin's high-quality windows and doors. We are the only authorized replacement contractor in the Northland. This caps off our 49 years of being your professional, dependable, and honest home improvement contractor. Please call us for any of your home improvement needs. Mediacom's fiber-powered broadband network was built for the future, and it's in your community. Delivering gigabit speeds to every home and business we serve, we'll be one of the first in the nation to take you to 10G, making your community one of the fastest in the world. The foundation is in place, and Mediacom will be making way for brilliant possibilities, igniting economic development and lighting up communities nationwide. Hi, I'm Dr. Charity Reynolds. I would like to remind you that COVID-19 is still around. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, and stay home as much as possible. Thank you. Show America what you made of, all right? Twelve hardworking Americans. I can use my full potential. Redefining what it means to be tough. This old woman pushing through. When you don't feel respected, you feel like you are the weakest link. Take your mind off the sadness and dig. <laughs> They will not give up. Sheer determination. This is why you're all here. <laughs> Tough as nails. New episode Wednesday, 8, 7 central on CBS. Wherever you start, wherever life takes you, home is always there. Strong, enduring, timeless. Stickly, made for life. Enjoy 35% off Stickly at Home Furniture. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5 as we take a look towards Bayfield on this beautiful summer day. Will it get any hotter this week? Dave will answer that shortly. But first, let's find out what's happening around the region. How a library hopes to combine reading and the outdoors, plus where you can get tested for COVID-19. All that and more as we take you around the Northland city by city. The Minnesota Department of Health will be hosting free COVID-19 testing at the St. Louis County Fairgrounds in Chisholm on Tuesday and Wednesday this week. The health department says anyone with or without symptoms can be tested. They also recommend signing up online to avoid long wait times. You can get tested Tuesday from noon to 7 p.m. and Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Plus, the Grand Rapids Area Library announced a new permanent activity readers can enjoy. The new activity combines reading and the outdoors and is known as a story walk. On the story walk, readers can expect the story to be spread out across a trail and each page can be read at a station. The children's librarian there says that choosing the first book was hard, but in the end, they went with Lisa Wheeler's One Dark Night. Meanwhile, phase two of the East Superior Street reconditioning project starts today. The stretch of road is closed to all traffic until the project is completed. Residents living near the construction zone and those who need access to the Lester River Medical Clinic can use Lester River Road for access. If there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland city by city. Coming up, learn how a grant will help residents at the Steve O'Neill Apartments work and learn from home. This live look shows a beautiful sky above Ascove, and it's probably going to stay pretty nice for the week ahead, discounting a slight chance for showers tonight. That could be all she wrote, though, until Saturday or so, and we'll take a look at that seven-day forecast together right after this break. They're live, they're local. Watch the CBS 3 News with Kristen Bakke and Anthony Mack tonight at 6, right after the CBS Evening News at 5.30. Kindness makes a world of difference at Arrowhead Supply. Donate $50 or more to charity and save more than ever before on stressless seating. Save at least $300 on stressless recliners and office chairs. Plus save hundreds more with $200 off every sofa seat you buy. There's never been a better time to help others and fill your home with the unmatched comfort of stressless seating. Be kind and save generously at Arrowhead Supply.
Storm damage happens, and when it does, turn to Peak Construction Roofing, the Northland storm damage experts. Peak simplifies the process for you every step of the way. We offer insurance claims assistance and free storm damage inspections. Call Peak Construction Roofing today and let us take care of you. Are you a veteran and a homeowner? Then think Streamline and maybe save yourself hundreds of dollars every month on your mortgage. A VA Streamline refinance is just for veterans and lowers your mortgage rates so you can save on mortgage payments every month every year and it's easy to qualify you don't need pay stubs a w-2 bank statements or a home appraisal and mortgage rates now are very low veteran and homeowner call 888-327-6866 always on the go but want to keep up with the day's news don't worry now we are wherever you are traveling no problem stream wherever whenever with live local cbs3 The 2020 Honda Rubicon at RJ Sport and Cycle. Hi, I'm Dr. Charity Reynolds. I would like to remind you that COVID-19 is still around. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask, and stay home as much as possible. Thank you. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Jim Peralt. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Well, the last time we met, we were talking about a chance for some severe weather around the area for the weekend, and especially in Wisconsin, it paid off. From Duluth over through Iron County especially, rain totals got pretty juicy over Saturday, Sunday, and even this morning. But are not some parts of that neck of the woods reported about three and a half inches other reports from the same area put it over five inches, so pretty wet there. Phillips, three inches, 2.3 just outside of Duluth to the south and the east town. 2.2 for Mercer, 1.8 in winter, and Manitouish, 1.7 inches. And uh, towards Sawyer County, there were indeed some flash flood warnings. Well, I think the rain is mostly behind us for a while. There's a chance for showers tonight. But with high pressure settling in, a dry spell's coming our way then for Tuesday through Friday. Right now at the airport in Duluth, 79 degrees for the current temperature, 39% for the relative humidity, so it feels a lot better. Humidity levels are going down. Westerly, northwesterly winds running 15 miles per hour, and the air pressure is still a little low at 1,011 millibars. And that's because a trough of lower pressure dragging through the arrowhead could create a chance for showers tonight, a uh, 20 to 30 percent chance. Current temps, 70 to 76 in the Upper Peninsula. We're looking at 73 to 80 in northwestern Wisconsin and in Minnesota. We're running from 68 up the Gunflint a few miles to 72 in Ely to 77 degrees in Grand Rapids. Low temps tonight likely will fall into the 50s where they'll probably stay for the week ahead. Lows in the 50s, daytime highs for the most part in the 70s. Though by next Friday, we could crack into the 80s once again. Well, speaking of that trough of lower pressure, let's see it come back here again. It's working through the Arrowhead. Folks there have been getting showers and isolated thunderstorms. 30% chance Minnesotans will get more here till about 8 o'clock tonight. 20% chance people in Wisconsin and the UP could get them till about 10 o'clock in the evening. Then the low will go and two big highs actually take over the upper part of the United States, bringing sunshine from Tuesday, probably through Friday. And then once we get into Saturday, this low will bubble up from the southwest. And it looks more impressive on this map than it will in real life. Come Saturday, it's a 40% chance for showers and isolated thunderstorms. And if it pays off, it might bring a quarter inch. So not a big deal this time around. Forecast tonight, here's what's coming around. Low temps in Minnesota will be in the 50s. And there's that 30% chance for the evening rain. And we move into Wisconsin, Michigan. 20% chance there with low temps in the mid to upper 50s for tomorrow in Wisconsin and the UP. Upper 70s for the highs with a clear to partly cloudy sky. Minnesotans will see the sunshine too with low 70s by the lake and mid to upper 70s farther inland. And that will be the drill probably through Friday. When again Friday does perk up temperature wise back into the 80s for a day because then we fall back into the 70s by Saturday. There's Saturday's slight rain chance, 40% shot for a quarter inch, followed by a clear to partly cloudy sky again next Sunday and Monday with highs in the mid 70s. And that's where we're supposed to be this time of year. Thanks, Dave.
The pandemic has magnified the nation's digital divide, especially for those already struggling to make ends meet. Now a Duluth apartment complex is able to offer more opportunity to its residents, many of whom struggle with homelessness off and on. Thanks to a grant from the Duluth Superior Community Foundation, the Steve O'Neill apartment complex on West 4th Street is now able to provide universal Wi-Fi access. Each apartment unit was also given a refurbished laptop. The complex includes 44 apartments for families that have struggled with homelessness. The COVID pandemic really shed light on the fact that those living in poverty experience incredible inequities with education, health and safety. And during the uh, COVID pandemic, without having internet access, our children couldn't access their teachers or their online educational resources. With this Wi-Fi access, the Steve O'Neill Apartments programming can now continue virtually. Coming up at 6, we'll hear from a tenant at the apartment complex. Let's take a look at the current confirmed COVID-19 case numbers around the tri-state region. In Minnesota, the total tops more than 51,000 cases with 861 new cases reported in the past day. The death toll now stands more than 1,600 people. In Wisconsin, today's total cases sit at more than 5,200, up 957 since yesterday. The death toll sits at 901. And Michigan's UP is reporting 418 confirmed cases. 11 new cases were reported since Sunday. 18 people have died. The coronavirus has changed the way Americans visit fast food restaurants. Wearing masks and socially distancing is designed to keep customers and employees safe. Now, some restaurants are looking at technology that doesn't require a human touch. Dania Backus reports. The burger chain White Castle has a new employee that could become more common in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. The robot arm from Miso Robotics can make french fries using artificial intelligence and is being tested in certain stores. The fast food industry has been turning to technology more in recent years. Customers can now place an order at a kiosk instead of with a cashier. Miso already has a robot called Flippy, making hamburgers for the fast food chain Cali Burger in California. Dealing with humans now carries a risk. Martin Ford, author of Rise of the Robots, sees more companies adopting this type of technology because robots can't spread coronavirus and it can cut down on worker cost. Definitely what's happening with the coronavirus uh, pandemic is going to speed things up. The company Chowbotics says sales for its salad-making robot called Sally have jumped 60% since the pandemic started. Meet Blended. And the business Blended currently has autonomous smoothie kiosks in just three locations, but expects that number to grow to nearly 100 over the next 18 months. But I think COVID has made uh, all the large operators uh, realize that they have to embrace technology. Blended CEO believes this type of technology is the wave of the future. I totally imagine a few years down the road, you will have a completely robotic food court. And you walk in, there are multiple concepts, uh, all robotic. A robotic food court would mean no need for human workers. White Castle says its new robot won't replace employees and instead will allow them to focus on other tasks like disinfecting the restaurant. Still to come, how an age change hopes to fight against early addiction in Minnesota. The garage, it's your space. Get a garage fit for a king or queen with our Regal Eagle 26 by 28 garage. Store all the equipment needed to rule your kingdom today. No matter what you put in your space, trust us to build it right. Economy Garages, built right price. Hi, my name is Kennedy and I'm into social work. I graduated from Duluth East High School and it's really nice to know that you have a local, affordable, two-year school to go to. Especially if you don't know what you want to do, it's a great place to start out. Go to Lake Superior College. critics are praising as genius is now the Emmy winner for outstanding talk show host Blood. and the stars love it too You're so the Tally Clarkson show weekdays at 3 on live local CBS 3 attention 
This is an important message for anyone diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers. In 2015, the Internal Agency for Research on Cancer warned that overexposure to Roundup and other weed killers may increase the risk of developing non-Hodgkin lymphoma. More evidence found that Monsanto may have known that Roundup was likely linked to organ damage and cancer. This information was hidden from the public as proprietary trade secrets since 1981, and Monsanto may have failed to adequately warn about the potential risk of cancer. A California jury found Monsanto's weed killer caused a groundkeeper's cancer and issued a verdict for $78 million. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call the Sentinel Group now. Our network of experienced attorneys is ready to fight for you. You'll pay nothing unless there's a recovery in your favor. Please call 800-627-1826. When you think of a bank, you think of people in a place. But when you have the Chase mobile app, your bank can be virtually any place. So when you get a check, you can deposit it from here. And you can see your transactions and check your balance from here. You can save for an emergency from here. Or pay bills from here. So when someone asks you, where's your bank? You can tell them, here's my bank. Or here's my bank. Or here's my bank. Because if you download and use the Chase mobile app, your bank is virtually any place. Visit chase.com slash mobile. When was the last time you put your feet first? From working on your feet all day, to hiking the trails, or chasing the kids, you put your feet through a lot. At Northern Foot and Ankle, we specialize in foot and ankle pain and can treat most problems without surgery. Referrals are usually not necessary, and most insurance is accepted. So stop living with the pain and get back on your feet again. Contact Northern Foot and Ankle today and put your feet first. Heads up to drivers traveling on the can of worms in Duluth. There will be temporary ramp closures in place as crews perform routine maintenance work on the interchange. The closures will take place from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday and Tuesday this week as well as next week. You can find a list of what ramps may experience closures on our website, cbs3duluth.com. The statewide age to buy tobacco in Minnesota will change this weekend. Starting on Saturday, the legal age to buy tobacco will raise from 18 to 21. It's part of the Tobacco 21 initiative, which aims to reduce smoking and to stop tobacco addiction before it starts among youth. State officials and smoke-free organizations say the law is a landmark for the state and is the first step in reversing the youth tobacco epidemic. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, the world's largest coronavirus vaccine study enters phase three trials with 30,000 Americans about to get injected. When will we know if the vaccine works? Plus, two major league baseball games canceled after more than a dozen Miami Marlins players test positive for COVID-19. Will America's pastime have to end the season early? And as Americans pay their respects to the late Congressman John Lewis, the efforts to rename a historic American bridge in his honor. That's all tonight here on the CBS Evening News. CBS 3 closed captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health Pharmacies. Keeping things safe, simple, and convenient through mail, local delivery, drive through and curbside pickup services. When looking for a TV and internet provider, we know you have a choice. This is Jessica. She still has satellite TV. Well, I get tons of HD. The Spectrum has tons of HD. And we get exclusive access to premium original content with Spectrum Originals. I don't have that. Plus, sometimes in the rain, our services go out. Because of the dish on your roof? Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-916-4499. And Spectrum Internet starts at 100 megabits with no data caps and a free modem. We have to get internet from another company, and it isn't nearly as fast. Spectrum Internet, $44.99 a month. I'd switch, but I'm stuck in a contract and would have to pay up to $480 to cancel. Spectrum has no contracts, and they'll pay up to $500 to help you out of yours. That's it. I'm switching to Spectrum. Get Spectrum TV and Internet from $44.99 a month each. Call 833-916-4499. Has your roof seen its better days? It's that time of year again to think of replacing your old roof. Call Peak Construction Roofing today for your free estimate at guaranteed affordable rates. Peak Roofing also provides the best roofing warranty in the Northland. Financing? No problem. 
0% financing up to 12 months or get a low interest payment plan that will fit your budget. Call the best Peak Construction Roofing. They'll do the rest. Let us take care of you. Coming up tonight, we learn how closing the digital divide at the Steve O'Neill Apartments is helping families. The fight for American jobs. We break down Ivanka Trump's visit to Duluth. Tonight at 6 on CBS 3. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez on CBS 3. Men's wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions for Man. Mainstream is your wedding headquarters. Downtown Duluth. Well, thanks for joining us for the CBS 3 News Live at 5 on this Monday as we take a look over Duluth from Spirit Mountain on what's been a pretty warm evening. Let's recap tonight's top story and find out what's coming up at 6. The fight for American jobs. That was the tone for Ivanka Trump's visit to Duluth Pack today where she watched its owners sign the Pledge to America's Workers Initiative. Meanwhile, 50 protesters gathered outside Duluth Pack criticizing the company for hosting her. And we have continuing coverage of Ivanka Trump's visit to Duluth Pack. And tonight at 6, we hear reactions from Duluth residents. That's your news tonight at 5. The CBS Evening News is up next. We'll see you again at 6. Thanks for watching.